um, mixed. Believe it or not, um, our, our recent survey showed that 83 percent of the respondents, 26 percent of those um, said that they were smokers, and of those 26 percent, uh, 62 percent said they wanted to quit. So we do offer free smoking cessation services through the Providence Community Health Centers, and they've been great. They go to each building and hold sessions. And so far to date, we've had 43 attendees to these um, quick smoking programs. But you're always going to find those hardcore smokers. Yeah, you, you have to understand, though. They smoke and they don't agree with it. And, and you know, we just want to give the people who do not smoke the right to clean air. We think it's important for them. How do you feel about the PHA's new uh, smoke-free policy? Uh, I think it's a wonderful thing that they're doing. A lot of people don't like the cigarette smoke and don't like that, you know, a residents that live next to them smoke because they smell it when they walk through the hallway. I think it's a good idea for the health of, you know, the elderly residents in the building. What, uh, what influenced you personally to try to stop quit smoking? Personally, um, it was my son. Uh, he's 16 months old. Um, I had no idea how it really affected him second and third hand smoke. I had no idea about third hand smoke, period. So I knew about a little bit about second hand smoke, but I had no idea that you know, it would affect his behavior and uh, health. So that's what inspired me to. Are you confident in the success of the PHA's program? Yep. I get residents telling me every day that um, they appreciate it. Um, they like the fact that everyone has to go outside, you know. So, um, I think so. By thanking the guest speakers who are here today, and to also thank our Providence Health and Authority staff members and residents. Uh, I would also like to acknowledge, acknowledge our partners in the Tobacco Free Providence campaign for all of your support. We appreciate you taking your time today and coming. Um, I'm not sure if I saw everybody come, but there are people that did show up that I want to thank. Uh, Nancy Smith from HUD is here. Councilman Brian Principe is here. Uh, Steve Peck, the City Council, and also Dr. Walter Hopper from the Rhode Island Tobacco Control Network. I want to thank you all for taking your time and being here today. Today, the Providence Housing Authority is proud to announce its implementation of a smoke-free policy with five of its six elderly and disabled high-rises. The high-rises Carroll Tower, Dexter Manor, Dominica Manor, Kilmartin Plaza, and Parenti Villa. The policy reaches over 1,000 public housing residents and states that residents and their guests are no longer allowed to smoke in their apartments. A unique element of the policy is that the PHA offers free smoking cessation resources to those residents who would like to quit. Designated smoking areas were placed in all five buildings so that residents who continue to smoke have a place to do so. On July 17, 2009, the Department of Housing and Urban Development issued a notice urging public housing authorities to implement non-smoking policies. Less than a year later, the Rhode Island Department of Health and the Mayor's Substance Abuse Prevention Council were awarded $3.3 million in federal funds from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and created the Tobacco Free Providence Campaign, a citywide initiative to reduce tobacco use. Through this campaign, the Providence Housing Authority was awarded $80,000 to contribute to the fight against tobacco by prohibiting smoking in the Providence's elderly and disabled public housing units. The smoke-free policy affords healthier living conditions because it bans smoking or tobacco use, which is the most preventable cause of disease, disability, and death in the U.S. In addition, secondhand smoke is a public health risk and there is no safe level of exposure. A smoke-free policy can also provide safer housing, given that smoking is the leading cause of residential fires and the number one cause of fire deaths in the United States. Prohibiting smoking indoors reduces operating costs such as unit turnover, cleaning and repair, fire damage costs, and insurance premiums. It truly has become a legal liability for public and private landlords not to have a smoke-free policy in place. When Stephen assigned me to be the project coordinator for the PHA smoke-free policy, he handed me a newspaper article with a picture of a disgruntled public housing resident from another city fist in the air. They were unhappy about the smoke-free policy. My first inclination was to run and to run fast. 
Uh, the beginnings of social change are not always embraced. Typically, there is opposition. But this challenge presented itself to be instrumental in upholding the PHA's mission to provide clean, de decent, and safe housing in modern terms. To be successful in executing a smoke-free policy in a large public housing authority such as ours, the following elements are required. A team approach, supportive partnerships as we have in the Tobacco Free Providence campaign, free smoking cessation opportunities for residents through the Providence Community Health Center, education and outreach to residents about potential health risks involved, and most importantly, positive messages. Our positive messages are clear. The Providence Housing Authority did not want to take away the right to smoke, but rather empower public housing residents with the right to breathe clean air. Instead of enforcing a policy, the PHA put into motion healthier living environments for our residents. Although I expected otherwise, a survey was conducted and showed that 83% of the respondents supported a smoke-free policy. In addition, almost one-third of them smoked regularly, and of those, 62% wanted to quit. Offering smoke-free um, smoking cessation services to the residents, their families, and the PHA staff, no matter their health coverage, sets us apart from other smoke-free public housing authorities. Our program includes one-on-one, on-site counseling sessions, and provides free nicotine replacement products such as nicotine patches, gums, and lozenges. I was particularly happy when we were able to begin our smoking cessation sessions before the smoke-free policy was implemented. I believe it sent another message. The PHA, PHA is there to help. To date, 43 PH res PHA residents have sought smoking cessation assistance. As part of the PHA smoke-free work plan, a smoke-free task force was created that meant monthly throughout the policy's research, design, and implementation process. PHA Legal Counsel did extensive investigation of relevant liabilities, cases, and past approaches. Approximately 10 months before the policy's implementation, widespread communication began with the residents in various forms, which built resident support and anticipation of this policy. Bilingual letters outlining the smoke-free policy reached over 1,000 residents. 347 pre-policy survey takers attended informational meetings table discussions and focus groups about the risks of smoking and secondhand smoke were conducted. Smoking cessation slideshows were presented and bilingual materials were consistently posted in all five buildings. Today there are more than 240 public authorities, I'm sorry, public housing authorities nationwide who have implemented a smoke-free policy. This is a major achievement for public health success, which will help ensure that more families have access to safe and healthy public housing. Smoke-free housing is the wave of the future. This is a proud moment for me, for the PHA, and for the Tobacco-Free Providence campaign in the fight against tobacco, because we are able to see a small piece of social change happening before us. There are residents and staff here supporting us here who struggle with their tobacco addictions that now have the resources to, and motivation to quit. We wish you luck in your fight against tobacco and thank you for highlighting the importance of this policy. Thank you. I would now like to introduce to you our Executive Director of the DHA for more than 20 years, a man that needs no introduction, Mr. Stephen O'Rourke. Thank you very much, Melissa, and uh, I want to congratulate Melissa when uh, I did uh, ask her to serve as a smoke-free coordinator. I, I knew she would do a good job, but you've taken it to extraordinary lengths and did a great job. And not only that, you know, she's on one of the TV stations last, last night. I wanted to know why when she's on the camera, she didn't put on the 15 pounds. When I'm on, I put on 100 pounds. It's not really fair. Another funny thing, we have a, a, a tough row ahead to help people break the smoking. I was on uh, John DePietro's uh, program this morning speaking about uh, no smoking policy, and uh, someone called our security operations manager, Jack Costa, called me right after the show. He said, the first commercial after that was a smoking commercial, or a smoke shop. Uh, I'd like to first bring the greetings uh, from uh, Mayor Tavares. He had an event that he just couldn't get away from. I'm sure it had to do something with the finances of the city. And 
we will certainly recognize the good work the mayor and the city council members have done in bringing fiscal sanity back to the city, so we appreciate that. I would like to recognize uh, Council Majority Leader Seth Gurdon, and thank you for being here today, represents the Fox Point area of the city, and representing the uh, Federal Hill area, Council Brian Prince. Brian, thank you for being here, thank you for representing not only uh, Dominican Manor residents, Villa residents as well. Uh, I certainly will take a little point of personal privilege and, and say hi and welcome my good friend Councilman Wilbur Jennings, who I've known for over 20 some years, a man who went after election after election and finally won the representative of Western New York. Thanks for being here today. Uh, I do have to represent, uh, or certainly recognize, Nancy Greer Smith from HUD. Uh, in the crowd here somewhere, Nancy, uh, we're, we're in front of you, of course, but I can't say. Nancy uh, represents the charge of the uh, Island Club Office. And we've been strongly encouraged by the uh, National Club Office to implement these smoke free policies. And Melissa said there's 234 housing authorities now, but there's certainly more on the books. We're contacted on a daily basis that we share information to help that take place. I want to recognize and thank collectively, our colleagues on affairs and the Substance Abuse Prevention Council. Thank you for all the good work that you do. We really appreciate that. And certainly our partners in the smoke free effort without you, this would be impossible. Now, I would like to say, most of you probably saw the article in the paper this morning. In a way, we're glad for that because controversy brings more media. So we get together to get state our statement on the smoke free policy. Melissa said it earlier. But I do want to respond to one of the people with some of the statements that say, I want to assure you, the PHA will not tell you when you have to go to the bathroom, what you have to eat, or when, thank God, to have intimate relations. Uh, and that's a promise from the housing uh, I sort of remember, you know, I've never smoked except for the cigar, and I really almost eliminated that gun that I was afraid of. I smoked when I had my picture on the page of the paper. Hypocrisy, Many years ago, growing up in the South Side and attending St. Michael's School in the South End, the nuns always told me if you smoked, it would stunt your growth. I think the evidence is clear, it doesn't stunt your growth, because I'm bigger than I should be. We all know the harmful effects, and every year, more and more, that is There's no road to smoke free. Housing has been difficult, and I personally, from a libertarian political philosophy, don't like to tell people what to do. But there are certain things that happen. We have, we have responsibilities as property managers in the Public Housing Authority to take care of the well-being of all of our residents. Most of them do not smoke. Many low-income folks that we serve suffer from asthma and emphysema. And the harmful effects of secondhand and direct smoke not very good for them. So those are the people we're really concentrating on. We're not trying to harass the smokers. We're not saying you don't, you can't smoke anywhere. We have some smoke areas here, and more importantly, what we want to do is help them break that habit. You know, if you're a two-pack-a-day smoker, and there are still a lot of them around, with the cost of smoking, they put that over a year, that's over $6,500 spent on cigarettes. I would think Lowing people will have a better way of spending their money than uh, harming their health. So it won't be easy. So we brought this resolution to our 11 member board, in fact. All the resident commissioners were against it. I want you to know that. And uh, they, our resident commissioners, commissioners were very, very persuasive. And I was afraid at the last minute that we were going to lose the vote because no smoking or smoke free environment. But, you know, we, we got, got that passed, and I'm happy to say those resident commissioners, two of whom are here today, Dolores Casella, the back, she's a resident uh, here at Dominican Manor, and J.P. Taylor, the resident advisory board president from Hodgman Park there, both are strong advocates now of the program, and Dolores actually just came from the class in the community room on no smoking and uh, uh, with the nicotine therapy. So we're very glad they're on board. You know, if the residents are on board, this thing can be met. 
So I'm going to take the opportunity now to uh, introduce Majority Leader Seth 